Hello everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. I've got Tina with me today and we're going to be talking about her book, How to Be Found by Recruiters on LinkedIn. Tina, I, I've read this book and I tell you what, anybody who's who's out of work at the moment needs to buy this. And the reason for that is it doesn't it doesn't just tell you how to correct create your LinkedIn profile if you're out of work or you're or you're you've been laid off. You explain as a recruiter what you can see through your recruiter edition of LinkedIn. And you say, if you don't do this, I can't see you. Or if you do don't do this, I can't get the right response from you. We're going to talk about this in more detail. So I really enjoyed it. I'm not looking for work, but it, I'm, I'm basically saying now, whenever I find someone out of work, I say, buy this book. Tina, where can people find you? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. Um, the best place to find me is, of course, on LinkedIn. That's that's my my preferred uh, social media platform. And, um, and, and Ben says hello. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Uh, so um, just give me um, uh, the, the reason why you, what was the inspiration behind writing the book? Well, I think there were two inspirations. I, I worked with executive search for the past 20 years and I often get the same questions from people. And I thought the best way to get all the answers in, in one place is to write a book. So anyone can really afford this book and, and get the answers because one-on-one -on -one coaching is is more expensive. But if, if you get the book and, and take action, you will get exactly the same results. And two years ago, I followed a course um, that's called uh, Visual Storytelling and Sketch Notes, and I started making those uh, drawings to help uh, visual learners to, to understand better and, and, and get the message. So there, there were people on LinkedIn um, who said, Tina, you, you have to write a book uh, with your sketch notes. So I combined the two of them, and, and that's how how the book came because each um uh chapter starts off with the with the the cartoon i'll bring it in a bit closer so that, that, that exactly so so how can we how, how can we be found on on linkedin by recruiters so the most basic thing is to to update your profile because most people um, whom I meet, they say, oh, don't don't look at my LinkedIn profile because it's not updated. And, and most people who are not looking for jobs, they they just uh, created an account and never did anything with it. But it's so important to to update it from time to time proactively because you never know what can happen in life. I, I meet so many people who who have been made redundant, not because of. Uh, their own um, results, but um, that something happens in the industry or in the company. So what, one day to another, you, you find yourself out of work. And it's really much better place to be proactive and, um, and do this work uh, before you need a new job. I think there's two things that I always see. Well, well first of all, most people can get laid off Yes. And they don't know about it. You know, that it, it, it just arrives. And 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 I'm sure it frustrates the hell out of you that first of all, foremost, they haven't updated their CV or they they even come to you without having done it. And the second thing is that they haven't actually invested in building a network. And that means but both of those things that they're behind in their job search, isn't it? Yes. And and you come with a totally different energy. When, when you network with somebody without needing a job, or if, if you reach out, just, hey, give me a job. That, that's, that's the most common thing that, that, I, that I hear from people. Mm. And that's not how you, how you start uh, building a relationship. So it's really important to help others before you need help from, from your network. Yeah. Um, so to take us through um, three, three things, um, on your profile that will allow you to be found by you as well the, the most important 
thing on your profile is your job title. So your current and previous job titles. And, and some companies have really fluffy job titles that are not used anywhere else. I know and, I have a friend who's just become chief storyteller. Wow. <laughs> what does it even mean? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I thought it was, I kind of actually thought it was kind of a joke. And I went back and said, did, did it, did it happen once upon a time? <laughs> and, and <laughs> <laughs> so th there you really have to put the, the name that's used in your company but also in in the experience section or, or somewhere on your profile you need to put the the real um job title because otherwise you will never be found and it's really good for the company to keep you as the best kept secret but it's not good for your career so so matt pibus Matt, Matt is a friend of mine. Um, yes. He's actually asking a question. Um, a common demographic overlooked in the recruitment game of the over 50s. How would you advise the, the golden girls and boys um, uh, to present themselves? Well, it's, it's the same um, thing everywhere, I think. Um, people over over 50, because what we're looking for um, normally in job description is people between 35 and 45. And that's a conversation that I have with the hiring managers, with the companies who, who ask me to find uh, international talent for them. Would they be open to have people who are over 50? And then they say, of course, it's all about the mindset. It's about the attitude. And, and sometimes, um, it, it's, it works both ways. So um, the companies need to be aware as well. Of course, if you are expecting um, a VP salary um, and you're applying for, for a managerial job, it's, it's different. But if, if you already have had all those great titles and now you just want to contribute to the team and to the company, um, it's it's totally different. So you have to be open to have the conversations and the expectations. And I think people over fifty normally don't have small children at home, so they sleep at night, and they are a great asset to the team and the overall um, knowledge of of the of the company. So we th thank you for that, um, and thanks, Matt. Um, so in terms of the, the three things that we need to be doing, we need to be um, uh, updating our profile. Um, we need to be building a network. What else should we need to be doing as well? I think there, there is one feature on LinkedIn. It's called Open to Work. So yeah. there are two versions. One is the, the one where you have the green banner around your uh, profile photo. And this is for somebody who is uh, out of work and, and looking for, for a new job, um, like, right this moment but if if you still have a job and and your boss doesn't know about it you can be discreet about it and linkedin has an option where you can talk directly to the recruiter so people who use the linkedin recruiter version so that's that's how you um, can tell which kind of positions you're open to and and uh, also the timeline, if it says I, I'm immediately looking, or you can say that I'm casually looking. So I think everyone on LinkedIn should put that one on their profile because you never know which opportunity might come up, like your dream job. So that means that you're open to have conversations. You, you don't have to say yes and sign the work contract, the first conversation. It's all about uh, showing that those are that's the future where you want to go to because we can only see what you have done in the past. But I want to know where you want to go in the future. So, so this is something, isn't it, that that you can see? Yes. Their employer can't see it. No. Or and and nobody else can. But at least that they're what they're indicating to you is that they're open for a conversation. Exactly, and. Um, I get a list, it's like a Google search. I, I get thousands of results of candidates. And if you have indicated open to work, you will be on the first page and you want to be on the first page to be found. Those are the people I contact uh, as the pr first priority because I know they are actively 
wanting to have those conversations and they are active on on the platform yeah um so um i've written down here um active talent is is that a, is that is that what we've just been talking about well that's part of it that yeah. means that if you're looking for a job you should be active on the platform because even if people have indicated that they are open to work but sometimes it takes three weeks before i hear back from them so if you're looking for work come to the platform at least once a day or once in the morning once in the afternoon i i know it's it's challenging to go back to linkedin and and you don't you're applying applying and you don't get any any feedback because it recruitment takes time sometimes it takes months before before you you find the job so but you really have to show up on the platform because linkedin shows the candidates who are active to recruiters because they know uh, that that's what linkedin is selling the the ca the candidates the talent so if you're active linkedin will sh with the algorithm will show your profile to more recruiters that's that's how you will be found if you are I, not on the platform i mean there's a saying isn't there that um that, yes. that looking for a job takes as much time as as doing a job um but i mean if that's some of the things that you need to do then you kind of need to do them but maybe people don't know because they don't know your side of the story exactly and and also if you apply for jobs through linkedin that gives an indication to the algorithm that you're active. So everything you do on the platform, I, I get an indication that you're active. It doesn't tell me how many applications you, you have sent to which companies, but at least it shows this is active talent. And um, what about um, skills like keywords and stuff like that? Well, keywords is is and skills that's that's what i'm working with every job description has the skills what what i'm looking for and linkedin matches those skills with uh, with the talent so when when i'm asleep uh, then linkedin suggests me new new candidates uh, in the morning only based on the skills and the most important skill is your job title but wow. also your industry and um, anything that's found in in a job description that goes with your job title and in different companies you can use different uh, synonyms like purchasing buying procurement it's all the same thing but you have to have all those three on your profile and, and what is the difference between a, a headhunter and a recruiter a headhunter is somebody who works for many companies and a recruiter is somebody who works um, in one company, recruiting specifically for for one for that company. But if I ha I'm interviewing somebody who is not a great match with, um, let's say, Coca Cola, then I would uh, remember that actually there there is another company like Nike where your profile uh, would be a better cultural fit. Not saying that you are a bad person, but just uh, it's not a cultural fit. So I can. Uh, introduce you to another company so that's that's why it's quite uh, interesting for people to connect with headhunters in their local area in their industry if, if you're looking uh, proactively for new jobs I, I know so many people who have never applied for a job that they always were headhunted but that doesn't mean that uh, it, it only works one way you you it's a relationship you check in and and see um, how things are going and i often contact people for sourcing asking do you know anyone else so it's it's important to have those conversations to, to stay on I, top of the mind i was always told from 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 a very young age that the relationship that you had with recruiters was something that you could ultimately go through the whole of your career yes on the basis that you may change jobs in sales every two three four years um that you would end up going back to those people or those people would would ring you in two or three years and say i've got this opportunity are you looking for a change um so so and i was always told it's a strategic it's it's you, you basically you need to have some friendly recruiters that you will have for the whole of your career 
Yes, and and it's also good for the recruiter to know you and and um, so sometimes the best recommendations come to those connections and and if I send um, a message through LinkedIn um, about, about a new job opportunity and you don't reply, I, I will see it five years later as well that you didn't reply. So take those. I don't know, one minute to reply that it's it's not a good timing, but let's stay in touch for future mm -hmm. opportunities. Just this little uh, gesture sh shows that you're interested in, in building a relationship. Um, so we got uh, another question from uh, Matt, which I'm interested in is, what are your thoughts on flare posts? Um, should you do them or does it make you sound desperate? What is a flare post? I think it's when um, you put a post out where you say, I've been looking for a job for 10 months and I haven't got anything. Oh, okay. I think um, you you can do it um, directly in, in DMs, like in direct messages to a network. But if, if, you, if you're looking for a job, uh, I would not say anything negative. I would just highlight your skills and and there are so many people out there who want to help you so they reshare the post but it's really the the intention and how you do it um so if if you do it in a, in a nice way um most people want you to succeed and 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 tag people to 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 help you I think that's human nature. People are kind. I, I, I agree. I, I think that people are kind. Um, and I think quite often we, if we're out of work, we can spend too much time overthinking about the fact that we're over, uh, we're out of work. And actually most people will, will want to help you. I mean, I'm, I'm forever putting, you know, comments saying, sharing with my network and stuff like that on people on, on posts, because I want them to go out and get a good job. Exactly. It's not I, only a job. It's, I think it's so important for, for your family life. A everyone will benefit if, if you are uh, do doing um, a great job and, and living your best life and contributing to the society. So people really want to help you, but do, do it in, in, an, in a nice way. Yeah, so one of the things questions I got for you is about internal promotions, because I remember when I worked at um, Oracle, I was there for 10 years and in 10 years I did three different jobs. Yeah. Um, but what happened was that um, it wasn't until I'd kind of done the second job or something like that where, you know, my LinkedIn profile for Oracle was just like blank, which is when I put in the internal jobs. Is that the right thing to do? Yes. Um, putting the internal jobs is also something that gets you on, on top of the, the search list. So people who have had promotions, internal promotions. And it also gives me an indication where you're at. Because I often hear, I, I just had an internal promotion. So this position that you're talking about would be a lateral move, but I can't read your mind. So you're wasting everyone's time by not putting that up. And it's a good indication. So um, LinkedIn applauds that. They they want people who, who have uh, promotions. So, that's a really good idea but do it before you need a new job and and doing it i mean at the end of the day linkedin algorithm re rewards you for coming to the platform and interacting doesn't it yes um and if you keep that in mind um and always be nice to people and um and, and encourage things um i'm just gonna mention andrew because andrew comes to a lot of my podcasts um and he says that a job you have supports the life you want. Exactly. It's it's um <laughs> we are human beings. Uh, it's our whole life. It's not not uh, like our free time and and work. I think many times we it, one energizes the other. So if you're in the right place, then the rest works out well as well. So, Tina, thank you so much for coming on and talking about your book. I've actually just bent it to look at the, um, but um, uh, you've got one of those as well. Um, <laughs> I, as I say, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not looking for a job, but anybody who's out there looking for a job, 
you, you know, I'm, uh, there's lots of resources, but this is a really good resource. Just as it j explains how to get your LinkedIn profile looking right from somebody that's actually got access to a system that, that is looking for people like you. Um, and I, it was just like, there were so many things in there. I thought, I, I know a lot about LinkedIn, but there was a number of things in here which were a revelation to me about, um, I'd not thought about that because I'm not a recruiter. So, so it, it was so so good to share this information with uh, backing up the data with real facts instead of just guessing because that's how how it works from the recruiter side. So, so, so I'm just getting rid of, rid of a fly. Um, Tina, uh, where can people find you? So uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Mention mention this show, and I'll be happy to continue the conversations. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about your book. Excellent book. Um, and I'll see you on LinkedIn.